Number 10, the Paradise Plane. There is a Boeing 737 aircraft abandoned seemingly in the middle of the jungle in Bali. It's not at an airport. It's not sitting in a plane graveyard. Instead, it's simply in an open field at the edge of the forest and near a limestone quarry. But the weirdest part is that nobody knows how in the world it got there. The plane just kind of showed up, parked itself, and then whoever was in the cockpit climbed down the stairs and simply walked away. It was like some kind of magic trick. Abracadabra, poof, there's a plane. You would think that somebody would know something about a missing Boeing 737, but that's just not the case. There was some chit chat a few years ago about turning the airplane into a hipster-like restaurant for tourists, but it never happened. There's a shabby hut by the plane that somebody may or may not have been living in, and absolutely nothing is being done with the aircraft. Still, it managed to turn into a tourist destination all on its own, as eager backpackers hunted out the mysterious aircraft, passing on the legend one brave and curious tourist at a time. Number 9. The Luftwaffe FW-190 in 1989, a hiker discovered a German warplane from World War II hiding between the tall trees in a slight forest clearing just outside the city of St. Petersburg, Russia. The mysterious plane is a Folk Wolf 190, also known as an FW-190. It was used by the Germans in the Luftwaffe, their deadly air force that disseminated the Allies during wartime. This particular aircraft was fashioned in 1943, built in a factory in the German city of Bremen. But just how on earth did it end up in a Russian forest? Who flew this plane? According to War History Online, the pilot's name was Paul Rotz. He crashed the plane behind enemy lines in July of 1943 while carrying a huge 550-pound bomb to Leningrad, the former St. Petersburg. This particular siege was one of the biggest and bloodiest battles of World War II. Many hundreds of thousands died on both sides. He was shot down by artillery cannon fire and had to make an emergency landing. When he tried to get back to a more friendly territory, he was captured by the Russians and sent to a POW camp until 1949. He died 40 years later exactly, which was a very spooky coincidence, seeing as that was the year the plane was found. But he never knew about the recovery of the airplane, you know, since he was dead. This plane was retrieved by helicopter and fixed by restoration professionals in the United Kingdom. During the restoration process, it was found that the fuel lines were blocked, and there was a cloth rag shoved into the engine. The engine had only been put in a few short days before Rats took off. Allied POWs frequently worked in German factories, so it is entirely possible that one of them sabotaged the engine. It's now the only FW-190 that still functions. Number 8. The Caspian Sea Monster The Caspian Sea Monster really does look like a sea monster. It looks like a gigantic aquatic beast resting on the western shores of the Caspian Sea. However, it's not a monster at all. It is a weird aircraft that had been abandoned for over 30 years. The aircraft was abandoned after the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 1990s and condemned to slowly rust at the Kaspiks naval base. But just what is this bizarre looking aircraft? It was an experimental hybrid between an airplane and a ship designed to move over water without ever touching the water. The Russians called it a Kranoplan, and it's actually classified as a ship by the International Maritime Organization, despite the fact it flies and doesn't sail. It was designed for speed and stealth with the capability of skimming across the surface of any body of water at a height of between 3 and 16 feet. This meant the aircraft could not be detected by radar. The Soviet Union loved its secrets during the Cold War and tried their best to create the most powerful version of an Ekranoplan, probably with nefarious intent. Their best product was the Caspian Sea Monster. However, when the Soviet Union collapsed, the program was scrapped and the plane was abandoned. It has since been retrieved as part of a plan to turn the Caspian Sea Monster into its very own tourist attraction. Still, it hasn't managed to make it off the shores of the Caspian Sea just yet. Number 7. The Plane in the Woods Recently, people on Google Maps have been noticing a random Boeing 727 parked in the middle of the forest. Naturally, it raised a few questions. The aircraft can be seen from satellite images in a small patch of Oregon woodland, but it's not actually abandoned like most people think. It was acquired by an engineer named Bruce Campbell, who converted the aircraft into his own private home. Cool. It reportedly cost him $100,000, then another $100,000 just to get the airplane onto his property. Campbell then turned the interior of the plane into a modern home, complete with all the original equipment. It's like a spacious apartment, just over a thousand square feet. It's very cozy and warm, and perfect for a single guy. And yes, the cockpit is still just like it was when Bruce purchased the aircraft. 
He even uses the original bathrooms. So, for all those urban explorers out there who want to discover the abandoned plain in the Oregon woods, maybe pump those brakes. Bruce doesn't really enjoy random people sneaking onto his property to take pictures of what is literally his house. Have you seen Bruce's plane on Google Earth? Do you think you would ever want to do a project like this? Let us know in the comments section down below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Abandoned DC in Iceland In Iceland, there is part of an abandoned plane located on what is known as the Black Beach. The epic wreckage belongs to a United States Navy DC plane that crashed in the year 1973 after running out of fuel. Thankfully, everyone that was on the plane survived the traumatic incident, including the pilot. However, it later came out that the pilot made a big error, causing the plane to go down. He switched to the wrong fuel tank. This caused the plane to run out of fuel to keep going. Even all these years later, the plane could be found in pieces on the beach, dangerously close to the sea. One of these reasons the abandoned plane is particularly special is the landscape it's surrounded by. The plane is a pale white, with United States Navy still visible on its hull. It stands out dramatically against the surreal landscape of black rock and sand. But getting there is a challenge, and it's forbidden to drive to the plane, even with four-wheel drive. There are also no roads or tracks to help you find the crash site, so you would really have to adventure to see this beauty. The site kind of looks like it's from a science fiction movie. It's truly a photographer's paradise. Number 5. Konzo Plane Crash The Konzo Crash Site in British Columbia, Canada is one of the most mysterious abandoned planes anywhere in the country. The only way to reach the destroyed aircraft is by hiking deep into the lush boreal forest on the coast of Vancouver Island. But how did the plane get there in the first place? It crashed shortly after takeoff back in February of 1945. The plane belonged to the Royal Canadian Air Force. It took off from Tofino, carrying 12 passengers and 880 pounds of bombs. Luckily, the bombs didn't explode upon impact and were quickly removed from the crash site. There definitely aren't bombs there any longer, and even though it sustained serious damage during the impact with the Earth, it remains still pretty much in one piece. The crash site was originally registered as an archaeological location and a point of historic interest. However, because the plane is so deep in the middle of the forest, it has been abandoned by Parks Canada. There are no signs and the only way to get there is by bushwhacking through mud up to your waist. Are you bold enough to search for the Konzo plane crash? Let us know in the comments below. Number 4. Catalina Seaplane In the hot and dry deserts of Saudi Arabia, there has been a seaplane abandoned in the middle of nowhere for over 50 years. It's a PBY-5A Catalina a type of seaplane used by the military in the 1930s. It's in pretty rough shape today, stranded on a beach near the Gulf of Aqaba. The aircraft was purchased from the United States Navy by a man named Thomas Kendall, who converted the military aircraft into a luxury flying yacht for himself and his family to use. It was in 1960 when Kendall took his wife and their children on an adventure that ended in complete misery. They parked the aircraft in the exact same spot it is in today, with the intention of spending the night. However, the locals didn't really like the look of them. The following day when they woke up, they were greeted by men with machine guns. The aircraft was destroyed, the fuel tanks were blown apart, and Kendall and his family were captured by a local group of militias and handed over to the Saudi Arabian army as they thought they were Israeli commandos. Long story short, it was pretty obvious they weren't commandos, and the family was sent on their way without being harmed. It could have ended a lot worse for the family though. They were extremely lucky the men didn't just kill them but they never did get their aircraft back, and it's still rotting in the middle of the desert. Number 3. Abandoned Albania At the Kachov military base in Albania, there are all kinds of retired fighter aircrafts abandoned and neglected. Some of these planes included the legendary MIG-15, the MIG-19, and even the Shenyang J-5 and the Shenyang J-6. There are actually dozens of haunted-looking aircrafts here, just hiding in the creepy tunnels seeming like they would never see the light of day or be flown again. The base was built in 1942, and it was still functioning just fine until in 1997 when the Albanian civil war broke out and rebel fighters took control of the base. Today, MIG-15 aircrafts are mostly used by private owners as sports planes. Of course, unless you're a North Korean, in which case you're still probably using the Chinese Xinjiang J-6. The aircrafts at the base in Albania have been collecting dust for decades but in 2004, a few of them were auctioned off to help Albania pay for modernizations to the base. 
NATO announced back in 2018 that it would invest roughly $58 million in the decrepit base, meaning the abandoned planes here will probably be shipped out soon to some kind of plane graveyard. Number 2. Biplane in the Bushes In the north of Poland, close to the sea, a damaged biplane from a bygone era was discovered simply abandoned in the bushes. The biplane is an Antonov An-2, which is one of the greatest mass-produced biplanes in the entire world. This amazing feat of aerial engineering used a single engine to fly through the sky. Though it was developed not for war, but for agriculture and forestry, the Soviets were the ones to mass-produce the biplane, starting in the year 1946. It was extremely durable and able to land and take off from less than ideal runways. The biplane in the 40s was used for crop dusting, atmospheric sampling, and for fighting forest fires. There were lightly armed combat variants, though they weren't actually used very often. As for where the biplane in the bushes came from, it was probably forgotten by the Russians, though nobody can say when or why. It does look pretty cool though. And number one, Russian Air Force Museum. The Central Air Force Museum in Russia is one of the weirdest aviation museums in the whole world. It's located near Moscow and houses one of the largest collections of aircrafts anywhere. It has 137 aircrafts on display, along with espionage equipment from the Cold War, interesting war instruments, and fascinating uniforms. However, the history behind the museum is more than a little odd. The museum was found in 1958, just after the local airbase shut down. At the time, there were only six airplanes and a few aircraft guns, mostly left over from the base. But the museum grew and grew, collecting more and more aircrafts. The main hall was pretty much destroyed by a mysterious fire in 2005, at which point it seemed like the museum and its displays could be abandoned. But repairs were done, and a new hangar was even built to bring in some more abandoned planes to be put on display, plus a new exhibition hall in 2020. Perhaps the most hilariously Russian thing about the museum is that up until 1999, it was closed to the outside public because it displayed prototypes that the Russian government felt were classified. Leave it up to them to do something like this, right? Today though, it's open to everybody. Number 9. Secret Nazi Base As the Nazis gained power during the late 1930s, they sent an expedition to Antarctica to survey the area and claim part of it for themselves. One of their goals was to find alternatives to oil and fat-based products like butter, milk, cream, lard, bacon, margarine, and candles, so they were prepared if Germany was cut off from imports during the war. Whale oil was a main ingredient of margarine at the time, so the Nazis figured it would be a potentially valuable resource. Until then, they had been buying whale oil from Norway, but they didn't want to give the country their business, so they built whaling ships and headed south towards Antarctica. The voyage set out in December 1938 and traveled towards an area now called Drawning Maudland, on the ship MS Schwabenland. But Norway beat the Germans to the site by about a month, and in early 1939, Norway claimed ownership of the region. Of course, the Nazis disputed this, and in August of that year, they named the area New Schwabenland after the expedition ship. They had two future voyages planned, but neither came to fruition during the escalating warfare between the Allies and the Axis powers. It's believed that the Germans planned to build a base in Antarctica, but this never happened, despite rumors to the contrary about a secret military facility called Base 22. The Nazis claim to Antarctica was abandoned in 1945, and there are no signs that they traveled there after their initial expedition. But their decision to travel there reflected a little-known part of the World War II history that could have had a much different outcome. Number 8. Buried Mountains In 2010, scientists revealed the existence of a massive mountain range hidden beneath the Antarctic ice, known as the Gomberstev Mountains. The peaks rise to over 8,000 feet and are buried beneath a layer of ice over a mile thick to the continent's eastern interior region. Russian scientists discovered the 750-mile range over a half-century earlier, but satellite images captured in recent years revealed the mountains in greater detail. The newer findings, which cover an area roughly the size of New York State, are like going from using a big, fat Sharpie to using a fine-tipped pencil, in the words of senior research scientist Robert Bell, who spoke with Live Science. These updated images expose a dramatic, rocky landscape filled with deep river valleys and liquid lakes. The mountain range is covered by a 6 million square mile layer of ice called the East Antarctic Ice Sheet. This poses important questions regarding the ice's potential to melt 
as well as why and how the Gombertsev Mountains emerged in the first place. Scientists reported in 2011 that they were making headway in solving these mysteries. The Gombertsev Mountains resembled the Alps, suggesting that they're fairly old, yet their steep, rugged shape more closely resembles a young mountain range. Researchers detected magnetic anomalies similar to those found in one billion year old rocks nearby, implying that the mountain's origins date back to around the same time when continents and subcontinents collided. Evidence further show that rifting events likely triggered the uplift of the range between 250 million and 100 million years ago. Solving the next piece of the puzzle will involve drilling through the ice and into the mountains to collect samples for data analysis. Number 7. Future Plant Life? Around 90 million years ago, during the age of the dinosaurs, West Antarctica was a lush, temperate rainforest that stood in stark contrast to its current barren and frozen landscape. Significantly lacking ice coverage, the continent had an annual mean temperature of 54 degrees Fahrenheit, and wildlife thrived despite the annual four months of darkness that the continent undergoes. At the time, the world was experiencing its warmest climate in the past 140 million years. As today's world endures rapid climate change, experts are exploring the possibility that plants and insects could once again thrive in Antarctica. Professor Ian Hayes, an expert on Antarctic aquatic ecosystems, told Stuff that Antarctica's warmest areas are starting to merge with the coldest parts of the subantarctic, which he says is much more diverse when it comes to mosses, lichens, and flowering plants. Hayes explained the organisms have a much better chance of surviving their journey toward Antarctica as global temperatures rise. He said to expect to see life forms like plants and small invertebrates to appear on the continent first. Rodents would possibly come next although it would take a long time for them to arrive after the most primitive organisms emerged. Some fish and crabs are already migrating southward towards Antarctica, while the climate is slowly becoming more hospitable to outsiders. It threatens to snuff out rare and fragile creatures that are found nowhere else on Earth. Scientists are still discovering new habitats throughout Antarctica, and they worry that any life forms within these environments will be wiped out before we ever even know about them. Number six questionable cave entrance. You can always count on overly ambitious and imaginative Google Earth users to point out anything they think may represent a secret facility, an undiscovered archaeological site, or evidence of an extraterrestrial presence on Earth. Late last year, these internet sleuths called attention to what appeared to be an unidentified cave entrance on a remote Antarctic island, which allegedly first appeared in 2007. The door disappeared from Google Earth around six months after it was first spotted on Greenwich Island fueling already rampant suspicions that the government of some country was hiding a secret. Conspiracy theories abounded, including allegations ranging from the possible existence of a top-secret military base to evidence of a lost ancient civilization, which the authorities might be trying to hide at all costs. Perhaps the most outrageous among these theories is the idea that the alleged secret portal leads to a so-called hollow earth. The cave appeared to measure roughly 249 feet wide and 74 feet high, big enough to potentially fit hundreds or even thousands of people inside. Blake and Brett Cousins, who co-host the Third Phase from the Moon YouTube channel, speculated that perhaps a natural event such as a snowslide or climate change exposed and or concealed the cave. They even went as far as suggesting that a rock formation outside the cave is a deliberately constructed staircase to its entrance. Naturally, everyone wanted to contribute to their two cents, especially those who are skeptical of modern science. Since the story broke, however, the so-called cave entrance has failed to regain the attention of international headlines. What do you think the hole was? A secret base? An ancient cave? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 5. Doomsday Glacier Antarctic ice sinks at a constant frequency of 5 Hz. According to a 2018 study analyzing two years' worth of seismic recordings on the Ross Ice Shelf, the humming noise, which cannot be heard by the human ear, is caused by regional and local winds and is affected by surface snow, ice, storms shifting the position of the dunes, and excessive melting, says Live Science. Scientists discovered the noise unexpectedly between 2014 and 2017 after installing seismic monitors on the ice shelf for other purposes. Upon reviewing the data, they realized that the active winds blowing over the uneven Antarctic surface caused near-constant vibrations in the uppermost layer of the snow, collectively known as a seismic hum. Study author 
Julian Chaput, described the phenomenon as sounding like someone constantly playing a flute. Certain conditions, including dune-altering storms and warming events, can cause supple changes in the seismic hum. But tracking the ice shelf's song, scientists may be able to monitor important changes in the surface ice, and they may even be able to develop a warning system for if and when the Ross Ice Shelf becomes vulnerable to collapse. Number 4. A Lost City? At certain times in the distant past, Antarctica was mostly or entirely ice-free. During the Cretaceous period, around 90 million years ago, amid a severe episode of global warming, the southerly continent hosted dense plant life that was adapted to surviving through four months of annual darkness. The idea that prehistoric humans lived in Antarctica is far-fetched, but many conspiracy theorists cling to this notion, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. One popular theory, known as crustal displacement, claims that parts of Antarctica were ice-free as recently as 12,000 years ago, and that humans may have lived there before the onset of the last ice age wiped them out. This idea laid the groundwork for the even more outrageous claim that the fabled lost city of Atlantis was located in Antarctica, even though modern experts largely reject the idea that it even existed to begin with. Photos taken during NASA's Operation Ice Bridge project in 2016 show what armchair experts believe are the ruins of an ancient city. Around the same time, a video that an alleged missing camera crew left behind in 2002 showed the supposed remains of a prehistoric human settlement on the continent. Not surprisingly, the video conspicuously lacks credible, traceable sources, which only gave way to even more incredulous rumors about government cover-ups and Nazi claims to Antarctic territory. Wild stories like this leave someone with two choices, to either hop aboard the pseudo-archaeology train or to err on the side of more factual, albeit less exciting, claims. Number 3. Mummified Penguins While working at Cape Irizar on the Scott coast of the Ross Sea in 2016, ornithologist, bird expert, Stephen Emsley discovered dozens of dead penguins, including some that were long deceased and even mummified. Emsley was visiting the site after rumors of guano bird poop stains in the area, despite no known penguin colonies piqued his interest. He noticed the guano stains soon after arriving and found the penguin carcasses shortly thereafter. The corpses consisted mainly of chicks and were of the Adeli penguin species, which lives in nests built from pebbles along the coastline. Emsley took samples of some of the remains for radiocarbon analysis to determine their age. He was under the impression that some of the bodies were fresh, but the result revealed that some of the dead penguins were between 800 and 5,000 years old. They were preserved by the ice, which had only recently melted due to climate change and revealed the long dead colony. Emsley found that there were three distinct periods of penguin occupation at the site. The first was sometime between 5,146 and 2,750 years ago. The second lasted from 2,340 years ago to 1,375 years ago, and the third dates back between 1,100 and 800 years ago. He believes that the most recent colony fled during the 14th century amid the onset of a period known as the Little Ice Age. Unfortunately, ice and snow blocked the birds from reaching the ocean. It appears as though no penguin colonies have nested at the site in quite some time, but this could change in the near future, according to penguin ecologist David Ainley, who told the New York Times that as global temperatures rise, small flocks of Adelies are spotted wandering in the area increasingly frequently, and they are even occasionally seen nesting there. Number 2. Pyramids In 2016, images of what seemed like man-made pyramids in Antarctica's Ellsworth Range went viral, sparking rumors that an ancient civilization built the structures around 100 million years ago long before the earliest known human ancestors emerged into existence. These alleged human-crafted pyramids are around 4,000 feet tall, roughly 10 times the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza. These claims appear to have originated on a website called Earth We Are One, which credits a photo from 1935 as evidence that a prehistoric society built the structure way before even our most distant evolutionary relatives walked the planet. Citing credible evidence of previous plant and bacterial life on Antarctica, Earth We Are One guided its followers on a woefully misleading path that suggests the ancient vegetation is a direct indicator of having past human residence. But the existence of plants and bacteria does not necessarily mean that people once populated Antarctica. 
Much to the dismay of over-imaginative conspiracy theorists the world over, it turns out that pyramidal peaked structures, in other words, natural formations that look like man-made pyramids, are a common feature of glaciated regions formed from multiple ice sheets converging. They're entirely a product of the Earth's geological forces. And number one, Antarctic Paulinia. The amount of ice in the Antarctic region waxes and wanes in accordance with the seasons. In a phenomenon known as Paulinia, chunks of ice that are sometimes as big as the United States go missing from the ice pack. This happened in 2017, when a hole roughly the size of Ireland formed during the continent's coldest months, when ice is at its thickest. Known as the Maudrais Paulinia, it's located in a difficult to access part of Antarctica's Lazarus Sea. In an effort to get to the bottom of how and why the hole formed, experts relied on satellite observations and previous data. They concluded that a combination of cyclones and strong winds created the Polynia by causing pack ice to shift in opposed directions. The Maudrais Polynia was the size of Connecticut when scientists began monitoring it. It expanded by over 740% over the following month and eventually merged with the open ocean. Before the 2017 observations, researchers only knew of Polynias happening in Antarctica as recently as the 1970s amid the advent of satellite technology. They were baffled by the phenomenon. Study leader Diana Francis explained that mid-sea Polynias can impact the climate both regionally and globally and can interfere with ocean circulation. She predicted an increase in the frequency of Polynias due to climate change, citing the established connection between Polynias and cyclones. Past studies show that polar cyclonic activities tend to intensify in warmer climates, making the changing condition conductive to the creation of Polynias. Other studies have bolstered Francis's theory that climate anomalies in the southern hemisphere intensify the conditions under which Polynias form, but scientists are admittedly still trying to understand this rare phenomenon. Number 10. Bat Bombs It was December of 1941 when a dentist from Pennsylvania, Lytle S. Adams, went on vacation at the Carlsbad Caverns. The caverns are home to somewhere around one million bats. Adams wasn't particularly fond of bats, but he was impressed by the potential he saw in them. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and America went to war, Adams sent the White House a letter detailing his plan to demolish entire Japanese cities using bats. That's right, Adams wanted to use bats to carry tiny incendiary bombs. The whole idea was that bats would carry bombs to all the small nook and crannies throughout cities and blow them apart. This would create thousands of fires simultaneously over a much larger area than what a single bombing campaign could accomplish. Adams' plan was helped by the fact that he knew Eleanor Roosevelt personally. He managed to get an audience, even though his idea was a little weird and it was actually picked up by the National Research Defense Committee. It was at this point that Donald Griffin, a bat expert, got involved. Everyone was very enthusiastic about the project. Within just a little while, bat bombs became a United States government research project. They decided to use Mexican free-tailed bats. However, the whole thing turned into a failure. Tests began in December of 1943. Over $2 million was spent, and the project was canceled. There was an accident in which the bombs went off and lit a hangar and a general's car on fire. Besides that, the bat bomb idea didn't really work. They seemed like a great idea for a military technology, but they couldn't actually set fires all over cities. Most of them actually just fell to the ground and died after being dropped from a plane. Number 9. The Stargate Project Project Stargate was a very creepy mission undertaken by the CIA to try and develop psychic abilities and to use those psychic abilities as weapons of war. The truth of the project came to light when the CIA recently dumped 12 million documents onto the internet for the public to see. The organization has planned to harness supernatural powers in a way that has never been done before. They wanted to use psychic abilities to spy on their enemies. In their release documents, the CIA described psychoenergies as a special mental process in which a person would be able to perceive and change the characteristics of something or a person in space or time. In other words, they would be able to do things like look forward into another place using their mind, or to sneak into somebody's head, or telekinesis to move an object without touching it. In other words, the CIA wanted to make a platoon of creepy X-Men. Unfortunately, the project didn't work. Even though the CIA wanted to make a bunch of magic men, they simply couldn't figure out how. This makes sense considering telekinesis isn't a real thing, but amazingly, the project lasted from between 1978 and 1995. 
the CIA eventually conceded that they had gained no useful information and that it was basically a giant waste of time. Of course, they could just be saying that when in fact they really did create a league of super people and just don't want us to know about them. Number 8. The Daya Bay Reactor The Daya Bay Reactor is a strange piece of technology. It's actually a neutrino experiment designed to make a very precise measurement of a very important neutrino, which it did about 10 years ago. Neutrinos are pretty hard to study, and the reactor was built for that sole purpose. Within just the first 55 days of operation, the discovery of the measurement was announced in March of 2012. The reactor itself was installed underground in a complex facility filled with large particle detectors immersed inside pools of water in China. The experiment was done with the help of U.S. and Chinese scientists, with many of the scientists based out of the Institute of High Energy Physics in Beijing. But how does the reactor work? It uses detectors to pick up light signals inside liquids with the signals being generated by interactions between antineutrinos oozing out of six reactors. Antineutrinos are weird, able to pass through most matter without being interrupted, and they're almost impossible to detect. By detecting and measuring antineutrinos, scientists should be able to figure out a little more about how our universe was made. It comes down to matter and antimatter, though it's yet to be seen how the ability to measure antineutrinos could have an effect on military technology. Perhaps we'll be able to make bigger, even scarier bombs. Number 7. Cyborg Moths There is only one thing creepier than ordinary moths. Cyborg Moths Inside a laboratory at North Carolina State University, researchers have managed to make the very first cybernetic moths that could be used in the coming years as living drones. These things are known as biobots, and they are the first step to creating a cyborg army of moths. They could be used to map ecosystems, they can help in search and rescue missions, or they can operate covertly as spies in enemy territory. The possibilities with a moth drone army are limitless. But how do scientists hack an animal? The truth is that animals have a lot of electric parts inside of them, even you and me. Our brains send electrical signals to our muscles. It's how we control our bodies. The same is said for bugs, like these cyborg moths. So, scientists are figuring out how to control these electric impulses in the brain of bugs to bend them to their will. It's been going on for a while, too. A team of researchers at MIT even successfully steered a moth like a remote control car by using electrical impulses back in 2012. This time, they managed to rewire the bug so that they could control the flapping of its wings. They had to insert an electrode inside the insect's body while it was still in the cocoon. As the bug developed, its natural tissue fused to the implants, creating a very literal cyborg that the scientists can control. The technology is not perfected yet, but when it is, you can bet covert bug operatives will be buzzing through your neighborhood, maybe even watching you while you sleep. Number 6. The Puke Light Flashlight that can induce vomiting is one of the creepiest non-lethal weapons available right now. A company in California has developed this flashlight, an LED-based technology that blares bright pulses of light that can make a person puke. It's such an interesting piece of technology that the Department of Homeland Security is funding the research. But how does the puke light work? It gives off a focused series of random pulses. Before the human eye is able to focus on a single frequency, another frequency interrupts it. This causes what is known as intracranial pressure, which has the ability to induce nausea, headaches, disorientation, visual impairment, immediate irritability, and of course, vomiting. Who's the weapon designed for? Law enforcement. Police and Border Patrol agents will likely be given the puke flashlight because it works to render an opponent incapacitated and temporarily blind. It's a lot easier to subdue a suspect when they're blind and barfing. Do you think the puke light will be a useful tool for law enforcement? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 5. Crowd Controlling Stink Bombs What's worse than a flashlight that makes you puke? What about a grenade that stinks so bad you can faint? There is a stink bomb on steroids called the skunk. The device has been used in Israel, but is now on its way to the US. According to Fox News, the Israeli police and Israel Defense Forces began using these stink bombs several years ago. They were deployed by the military to help suppress hostile behavior without hurting the target. The odor released from the skunk bomb is so overwhelming that it drives everyone in the area away, and it keeps them away. The best time to use this giant stink bomb is during a riot or some kind of insurgency. It's as if a thousand skunks all sprayed at the exact same time, making anyone within smelling distance sick to their stomach. 
The stench had been described as a disgusting combination of rotten meat, unwashed socks, and the sewer. Gross. Reuters even described the stench as a piece of rotting corpse from a sewer being put in a blender, then the blended liquid being sprayed right in your face. To make things worse, the disgusting stench sticks to you like glue. The only way to get it off is by a secret removal soap, which obviously the public does not have access to. The only way to really deal with it is to just wear the stink until it wears off. Number 4. Mustard Gas Mustard gas is without a doubt the creepiest and most terrifying technology ever employed during wartime. Mustard gas is also known as sulfur mustard, a chemical agent which causes devastating burning of a person's skin and eyes, as well as their respiratory tract. This toxic gas can be absorbed into the body by inhalation or ingestion, or even if it just breezes past your face. It was used for the first time in World War I, with both sides seeing how horrendously efficient it was in incapacitating its victims. Mustard gas is mostly colorless, though sometimes it has a faint yellow tint to it, which is how it got its name. Those who have been unfortunate enough to experience mustard gas have described it as smelling like garlic and sulfur. What happens when a person comes in contact with mustard gas? Seeing as it's a blister agent, it causes redness and itching almost immediately, and a person will break out in blisters, then leak yellow pus. You can go blind, you can stop breathing, your nose will probably run, and because it affects the digestive tract, you will also experience horrible abdominal pain, a high fever, and of course, diarrhea and vomiting. And if you needed another reason mustard gas is so awful, is that sometimes symptoms don't show up for up to 24 hours. It's not lethal either, and so those who have become the victims of a mustard gas attack will survive, but be horribly disfigured by chemical burns and probably blind for the rest of their lives. Mustard gas was banned by the United Nations in 1993, Though there have been reports, according to Live Science, that similar chemical agents are still being used in the Middle East. Number 3. Operation Midnight Climax Operation Midnight Climax was part of MKUltra, the top secret project by the CIA to try and turn the hallucinogen LSD into a weapon. MKUltra itself lasted from between 1953 and 1973. However, Operation Midnight Climax was a submission with some seriously creepy undertones. According to History.com, operatives working on research for the project actually employed prostitutes to help lure completely innocent men to safe houses operated by the CIA. Once the prostitute had the John secured at the research site, he would be dosed with LSD. That's not all. There would be a two-way mirror in the room so that the CIA agents could watch what happens to the man as the LSD kicked in. Considering the men were with prostitutes, you can pretty much guess what the agents had to watch. There were also recording devices installed in the rooms, disguised as ordinary electrical outlets. The creepy experiments took place mostly in San Francisco and New York City. With almost no oversight for the program, the CIA agents were allowed to do basically whatever they wanted. But in the end, LSD couldn't really be weaponized, and all the agents accomplished was being perverts. Number 2. Flying Robots Robots are taking over. At least, that's what Russia says. According to them, Soldiers will be replaced by robots on the battlefield, and it's only a matter of time. Vitaly Davidov recently said that living fighters are going to gradually be replaced by faster and more accurate robots. And this guy knows what he's talking about. He's the deputy director of the Advanced Research Foundation in Russia. Apparently, Russia already has a roadmap to how military robotics will come into play. But nobody knows exactly what these robots will look like. Are we dealing with a Terminator-type situation? That's yet to be seen. So far, robots are mostly smart drones, automated guns, and of course, cybernetic moths. But the chances of creepy, humanoid robots leading the charge into the next war are actually pretty good. Does that freak you out? And number 1. Bionic Machine Shark There is a creepy bionic machine shark that was recently unveiled at a military technology show in China. This thing is absolutely horrifying. It's a life-size shark, completely mechanical designed for surveillance and reconnaissance missions. It was displayed in the China National Convention Center in Beijing, swimming around in a shark tank. It's a literal metal monster. And the newest one is a long series of drones disguised as animals that China has used to spy on its own citizens. This is the same country that back in 2018 unleashed a flock of spying bird drones over the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, home to the large Muslim population that has been in the news a lot lately. Many people suspected China was using their flock of spying birds to keep tabs on the locals. 
But what do they plan to do with their bionic shark? It can apparently move at high speeds, it can carry large loads, and it can monitor, track, and search. The shark can't actually eat anybody. It's no danger to swimmers at the beach. However, it is kind of unnerving to think that there are robotic sharks out there spying on people. I mean, what's next? Robotic whales? Killer robot dolphins? Schools of cyborg fish that can take down fishing boats? We can't say for sure. All we know is that in the next 20 years, the oceans could be the battleground for cybernetic animals. Thanks for watching. What do you think about fighting robot sharks? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and come back for more awesome videos. See you next time.